support lately. I think, yeah, I agree with you, I think they should go back to just playing a bit more standard. Chrissy in the mid, have those established roles. Okay, we are heading into the third draft of the day. Is PPD and the boys, are they going to stick with comfort? Or are we going to see something a bit different? We'll find out. Tosh Ben coming out from Eden Genius is probably also in reality, the scariest hero on the lineup of uh, Fnatic in game two. Do they ban out the Wisp though? Because they're they're actually first pick right now. So if Fnatic take Wisp, they get like two awesome picks. If you're EG, so you will leave Doom in the pool. There's no reason not to. Although it's not terribly great versus the Wisp. Uh, the other problem hero for them. I, if I was Evil Genius, I'd ban the Slot Icon. If they don't, I don't think at this point in time they intend to first pick it. They are gonna go with the Wisp band. So, assuming this is a Doom ban, I really hope Evil Genius is committed to a Slaughter pickup. I think Sumail is a great Slaughter as well. So you want to see them sort our first pick? Yeah. What about Queen of Pain? Do you leave that for Fnatic then at that mm. point? Yeah, I don't, I don't think the Fnatic oh. might like. There's still a Nightstalker in the pool. We know Evil Genius. Is Hold on. If, if you were Fnatic, wouldn't you, is it worth letting Doom through to get Slardar? I actually think that's like not that bad of a trade-off. I think it's definitely something you had to consider. It looked as, looks as if they just took it as a no-brainer that they had to ban out the Doom. I don't think they even thought about it for a second. But it, it, it does raise a, a good question: Is that worth it? And I think it, I think it would presently be. it probably yeah. would have. If you have uh, a proper strategy against it, for example, I know some of the teams do have something established. Um, for example. I think like Sardar Ancient Apparition is a one-two pickup is actually a very valid way to counter um, mm -hmm. letting out the Doom first pick. Viper is ri rising in popularity as well. I think mm -hmm. Viper is one of the better heroes against the Doombringer. And we did see Evil Genius is banded out in the first game, probably knowing that Fnatic could potentially pick up that hero. Uh, maybe maybe they were hoping that they would pick Shadow Fiend first, like the game one, mm -hmm. and then immediately pick up the Shadow Fiend. Or sorry, immediately pick up the Sardar because it took them a while to pick that, and they're also like leading with the same opener as game number one. But well, I think that Wind Ranger was a given. It's not that mm. strong without the without the Slardar though. But it's also denying it away from EG that they could have actually run the Slardar Wind Ranger as a duo. Um, I'm actually expected the Winter Wyvern, as I feel it's um, a pretty good counter to Slardar, just being able to stop that physical damage um, in a short period of time. But instead, they go the Shadow Demon again. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not sold on this uh, first round pick up of the Shadow Demon. Uh, I think there's definitely better heroes that they could have gone for. It's alright versus the Slaughter. Right? Maybe they want to lead into an anti-mage pickup later. Like you, it's it's flexible enough, although it's not as flavor of the month as like Ancient Apparition or Dazzle, let's say. But it's flexible, but they could have gotten a lot of better better heroes. Like there's still a Darkseer in the pool. Mm -hmm. There's no real synergy with the Ring Ranger, but it's still a, a, a great hero. Dazzle pickup now for EG, do you think? Because I feel like most likely uh, Shadow Demon is going to be paired up with a nuking hero, and Dazzle is a good save, plus it's minus armor on minus armor. Mm, I could, like, maybe. I like an Undying still for them. But Ben is sure. really sold on the Undying, that was one. Uh, the other being the Winter Wyvern, I really feel EG plays their best yeah, when PBD is on the Winter Shadow Wyvern. Shadow Demon's some, been somewhat of a counter to Winter Wyvern, though, with mm -hmm. using Disruption against the Winter's Curse. So I, I like the Undying more. It's also just more the way they, they utilize that versus Fnatic. Again, break them down early game, and Undying is... Oh yeah, the main elemental. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Bend out the other two games, completely forgot about it in the, th in the third. Is it that great versus SD, though? I think... I still think Undying would have been better than the Bane, although Bane is really good at putting out the early roaming pressure. Why do you feel it's not good against SD? I think that the disruption just owns owns the Fiend's grip. It's also like you can counter roam against them very easily. Like if sleep setup can get countered by disruption, you can also just. I mean, using that logic, a lot of support heroes are really good against Bane in the middle. That's not true. Like Dazzle is not that great. <laughs> I also don't think that the. Sleep I said a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say all of them. I mean. Fanatics turn to ban. The like common ones I don't think are, are that great versus the ban. Each and every one that has a disable. So, for instance, from game one, Rubik, Lina, to build on Ben's Rubik point, though, I don't feel that sleep is that good of a saving mechanism against the disruption whatever combo, uh, as it's only one second. Maybe there's also a significant animation to it where I feel like Shallow Grave is better in that regard. But it is a comfort hero for EG. It's one of their like kind of standard still ports. In fact, I would have much preferred to see Fnatic pick up the Bane. I know they much prefer playing Shadow Demon, but not just if they the could, either, I feel though. Bane is much better for this. The super successful Team Secret also values Bane mm -hmm. a lot. I think, I think it's a great pickup. Five seconds remaining. It's also like uh, now you don't even need the Night Stalker. If they go for Ember Spirit or Queen of Pain, you have plenty of shutdown already. 
<laughs> what a fanatic of Night Stalker, though. That'd be, I think it'd be a great pickup for both sides. Evil Genius can, can play as aggressive as they want to if they get it. And at the same time, for Fnatic to put on some pressure on Evil Geniuses and not just be on the receiving end, they also need a, an early game gank hero in, in, in that sense. I think Beastmaster or Clockwork is probably more within their comfort zone. The Beastmaster especially. Mm -hmm. Band coming out makes a lot of sense. Combos well with the Shadow Demon. They played it both games, although in two different roles. What about the um, the Leshrec as the four position that couples with the Shadow Demon? We've seen a couple of teams run um, the Leshrac support. We've also seen a couple of cores. I like it a lot more on the four than the than the cores, especially coming out from Fnatic. I think Black's Leshrac is particularly weak, uh, but it's it's def it definitely fits the bill. Just a note on him as well. He was eight and zero on Tiny in this patch before that last game. He's now eight and one. Yeah, first loss. Just shows stats are there to be broken. Don't care what the has tells me. <laughs> they were playing SEA teams too. Oh, you had to. Go. You're right. It's relevant. I really like. Mm. A big believer in him. I don't know why it's fallen out of favor for a lot of regions. Europe still holds it in a pretty high regard, although it's among all the tier two and tier three teams. I feel it's it's such a game changing mm. hero. It's good. It's good for disengaging and combos well with a lot of heroes. You'll always have sufficient five on five. He was always picked a lot early because you could run him as an off lane, but people really dislike him as solo off lane, and he can't be paired in a dual off lane. So that really limited his flexibility and where you could lane him. So now he's all, almost exclusively a, a support, uh, at least run by run by most teams. So I think that that really hinders like Wind Ranger for but example. But even then, I feel like support. he's one of the stronger supports. I don't disagree. I'm just saying that you know it. it he also gets countered by Clockworks, and he just doesn't have enough farm to ever get his Blink Dagger. There are a lot of downsides. Yeah, I think his biggest strength as a support, as, as he's only relegated to the four position then, is that he's able to put pressure on the mid lane most oftentimes via roaming. Mm -hmm. And I think that is uh, the strength of that is a little bit lessened with some of the mid heroes that we are seeing. We're seeing more uh, you know, sh tankier mid heroes, but we're also seeing dual lanes, which means that the Earthshaker is going to be in ways less effective providing that ganking pressure. But you're right, there's definitely, for example, like uh, Nubi Youth, they actually like running Earthshaker occasionally because they still run a lot of 6.84 um, and still run like Lena or Queen of Pain mid. Um, but there's the clockwork that you were mentioning. I don't know if the, some of the team shouting carries through on the stream, but we were talking about how the uh, the vibe of audience is, is really great for these lands. Another thing is obviously the atmosphere surrounding the teams and how, how loud they are, especially the Chinese teams. They yelled so loudly. Yeah, they were so loud we earlier. Back, Vici. They, well, they were so loud earlier. Jacob said, actually, those those Chinese casters are really loud. No, no, Jacob, that's the teams. It's the players. Yeah. yeah. Like, like the only thing we could hear for a little while was, Nice sound! Nice <laughs> Fanatics, turn to ban. <laughs> what, do we think, what do we think of these four so far? The winner will even make sense, of course, with PPD again, but the Alchemist? So with this pickup, I think the Shadow Demon is even stronger. I just generally like Demonic Purge a lot against uh, bigger tangier heroes. Uh, I think Fnatic has a pretty well-rounded lineup, although Clockwork is probably going to struggle a bit against both Alchemist and the Slaughter. But it is within Fnatic's comfort zone as well. Are they going to go one of those late game carry heroes? They have to at this point. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's definitely Black Zero that is missing. But what's good against all this minus armor, there's a significant amount of hold that goes through BKBs as well. Phantom lines are... I was thinking the same thing. That instead of the black AM that we see a black PL. I mean, AM can still work, especially with you, if you have an SD protecting you. What do you think of a morphling? Too slow. I think Alchemist will just farm you, just to, to, like, he'll, he'll have B6 slot in 30 minutes and Morphling will still have two items. I was yeah. just thinking within uh, the scope of heroes that Black likes to play. Mm. Spectre, not so much. Yeah, I, I think PL is much stronger than mm -hmm. Morphling in this situation. He also has much better armor. You want armor over Slaughter and Elk, for sure. Like, just in case, fan away the Broodmother, because it could be, um... 
know, some sort of aggro try with Slardar or just a safe lane farming Slardar and Alchemist mid. It's a good ban. It could really oh, just, yeah, disrupt support. the early game of Fnatic. Yeah. Mm. Those supports cannot handle a Brood at all. We forgot about Brood already. Other teams are going to forget about Brood. You think a lot of losses will happen due to forgetting Brood throughout the tournament? Some. Not as many as before. Answer mates ban out. Probably the most safe ban from Evil Geniuses, knowing that the last hero is going to be Blacks. I think their hero is much better suited versus AM, though, than a PL, because they don't Agreed. have that much AoE. Yeah, but, like, alternatively, what's worse than an AM? PL. You think so? I think so. You don't have AoE. I mean, you can go like a Mjolnir build on Alchemist, but most most of the time it's going to be Radiance into... I don't, I don't think they expect to be playing up against a 5-slotted PL. Hmm. Whatever the hero, it's probably going to be feeling a lot of pressure. Um, they are very likely, I think, to be running something aggressive with that Slardar, like the Bane Slardar. Ooh, slog. I like Ooh. this pickup. Oh, okay. That's, that's very different. Mm-hmm. So, one of Black's most obvious weaknesses is that he's not uh, as aggressive as a lot of other carry players. Mm -hmm. With Stark, it's completely different, though. Mm -hmm. He is usually very, very aggressive. But this means that they, won't, they don't actually want to let the Alchemist farm at all. I, expected, I actually expected them to try and out-farm with the anti-major PL. I guess, so did PBD. But w with the Sark, they're actually going to try and take over the jungle and pressure them very, very early on. Even steal the stacks potentially with ES, Wind Ranger, and Slark. And this was the weakness that you guys. Ooh, ooh Timber mm. saw. Oh, wow. Timber is really good versus Slark. Yeah, he's so strong. <laughs> he's incredibly good. I, I expected him to pick it up, like maybe versus a Meepo, maybe versus a Strength Carry, but it's, it's, a, it's a good pickup here. And it's just a male Timber saw. Okay, thank you very much, gents. We'll catch up at the end of this game as we find out who our first team are through to the upper bracket. In Group A, your commentary team for our third and final game in the first match of the day, Cinderin and Toby Mott. Thank you very much, Red. Yes, we are back here for game number three at a side between EG as well as Fnatic and Cinder. And I wasn't really expecting a Timber from EG. I thought the first Timber I get to cast would be Ice 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 over in VG Gaming, but... Some male timber saw here for game three. Yeah, this is really interesting because I think it's the first the first time I see some male play this hero. I can't remember EG using this a single time before. Uh, like the panel pointed out, it's a pretty good pick here, so I like that. Uh, just looking forward to see how he how he plays with this hero. It is very aggressive by nature, which he is as a player too. So I mm -hmm. think there there's some good potential there. I'm interested to see how they're going to balance their lanes out too, because you you put some male onto a hero which. I, you never see in the mid lane, and you very rarely see in the safe lane. And now, in fact, it looks like Samel is going to head up to the top lane and play him there. So, how do you do this? You got Universe on the off lane with the extra help from EG. The panel was was leaning towards, and that's when the Brew Mother ban happened. They're like, okay, maybe they just now play him as an off laner, but on the safe lane, and then you run this aggressive tri lane from EG like they started with in game number two. I think this. Hmm, wait a second, how are they... Are Fnatic offlaning Black Slark? It looks like it. They run and run offlane Black, they put DJ onto the safe lane. No, this uh, is... Io to the safe lane and then DJ off. It's like they're trying to dodge EG at the very, very start. This is a very good read if Fnatic are doing this to avoid having to play the tri lane with the Slark. Because the Wind Ranger is super good against EG's tri lane. Uh, Wind Ranger Shadow Demon Shaker lane is very powerful. And the Slark can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Timbersaw in lane. Especially because Timbersaw is a lot about being up in your face with the Whirling Death to harass you out of lane, or else you're just trading farm. Yep. And when he, whenever he does that, you just steal some stats away from him with Essence Shift. So... But would it not also be easy just to, like, just to push like, DJ up to the top? Okay, so yeah, DJ top, black mid, the oh, and the rest of them bottom. That Fissure can make life... <laughs> okay, Ohio, he can't, get, he can't deny it. Alchemist will still get the bounty rune, so... The extra Moolah will arrive for Arteezy. And what do we get? So it is going to be Black Top, DJ mid with net, and then Ohio safe lane. The thing that's kind of a giveaway in this case uh, that tells Fnatic that EG are probably doing this is that Timbersaw is really bad against safe lane tri lanes right now, uh, especially on the Dire. So the chance that EG would have actually just sacrificed... Oh, it's also Sumail. Sumail doesn't play the off lane. So it's, it's yeah. a very clear tell of how they're going to put their lanes. Um, so on second thought, it 
it is pretty uh, pretty clear that this is what they were going to do. And then they put Ohio in the safe lane instead of the Wind Ranger, uh, since he can, even if it's a trial lane from EG down here, do okay and get some XP. And how's some element to get anything? Ohio, like, this is where you can get something. PBD's going to come in, and Ohio, if he doesn't get a good cog pushback right now, then he is dead. In fact, I think he's dead anyway. PPD falls back to the ground and pushed away out of range of his last attack. And Ohio down to one Tango charge with one just being consumed now. This clockwork just doesn't have consumables. So Mail is getting crushed in the top lane, by the way, right now. Arteezy's almost dead in the mid lane at the same time. Like, if Fisher to hit, the power shot connected as well. Fear and Arteezy just kind of get, like, they're getting harassed back out by DJ as well as Mushi. The problem is DJ's also running low on life. So he has to back himself out of here. And if there's, I really want to focus a bit on this top lane because I feel like Timber Saw without farm is a really weak hero, and Samael as a player without farm is also not that good. I, I feel like this guy shines when he gets a good start and he really takes over the game, but I feel like there are a lot of carry players that are better at some, than Samael at playing from a deficit. So it's kind of like Fnatic are killing two birds with one stone here, the way they're shutting down the hero and player at the same time, and Samael is just finding nothing. Zero CS to Black's nine and six in yeah. this top lane, and they're sacrificing a clockwork for it, which. I don't think they mind. No. And it's Ohio really being sacrificed. He's got two levels. Yeah, it's not that terrific for him. Uh, like, he's still neck and neck with the Timbersaw. But Clockwork does something once he hits level 6. Without without the items, the Timbersaw doesn't really have a big effect. And what's Smell going to do? Like, he's going to get a surprise kill on top lane up against the Slark. The chances of that are, are fairly low. And in fact, Ohio does a nice little steal too. He actually takes the regeneration rune away from Universe. And it was pretty low at the time. Middle lane, DJ being initiated on. He got Nightmare set up for this concoction stun. DJ with the Windrow means they can't just fight into him. In fact, this vision from Mushi needs to buy more space. But with a Clockwork Rock and the attack from Fear. Oh, that's enough damage to kill off DJ. That's easy and Fear didn't really care about much more. Meanwhile, up on top, Disruption, Catcher, Poison. And actually, the catch is going directly into the poison, keeping Smell off the lane. No third stack. Smell will just pop a little bit lower from this. But good first blood for EG, considering this is the lane where Fnatic would really try to make things happen. And it's one of those situations where the moment you're nightmared as DJ, you have to make the choice. Do I think I can survive through the Alchemist stun and then win run, or do I have to do it before? Yeah. I it doesn't matter what he does there. He dies either way. He takes a couple of hits in a brain sap, or he has to try it first to avoid enough damage to get into lethal range. Well, top lane that leashes out from Black Net. Disruption follow up to Mel. He's just able to easily chain himself out of this. Net is trying to read some male's play so that he casts Disruption when the chain goes out. If he catches him mid-air during Timber Chain, I do believe Timber reappears where he is during Disruption and not at the target of the chain. But I'm actually not 100% sure on that, because let's let's face it, how often do you see Shadow Demon versus Timbersaw ever in any game? <laughs> very rarely. It's very rare right now. Well, she's trying to find this interruption to really cause problems with Samael. The problem is the interruption isn't enough. Like, it, unless you stop him halfway through, his chain doesn't really do any, anywhere near enough. Also, it is true, it's a low cooldown ability. So the 2.5 seconds he's gone from disruption, he has another one and a half and he can cast it again. Fear gonna nightmare, so, uh, RTZ. Okay, the nightmare taking oh, off, and it's a double it. stun because of it! With the concoction down, Mushi with the fissure, buy space for DJ to get himself out of here. He shackles on the fist, there's no fall, PPD, there's poison on him, but the power shot won't arrive in time. PPD will survive as he TP's back to base. DJ may not be so lucky. Fear's right behind him, Brace that is off cooldown, but it's not required. The attack from Fear is enough. And now it's 3-0 to EG. This was not the dream the Fnatic one saw. The idea from Usha there was really good, but he mistimed it horribly. The, the invulnerability time of transferring the Nightmare should easily avoid the stun for at least himself, but... Yeah, that was, that was not what Fnatic were looking for. They ended up getting themselves... If Musha didn't try that, they would have only got one kill, so unfortunate. Black able to pounce himself away, but he knew the second he used pounce, the Nightmare Fault would be here. And they can go whirling down. Oh, oh Samael. no, Samael. Now it's his turn. He was a little bit too early, looking for the Timber Chain onto Black, and Black staying as far away from the trees as possible, ignoring HY, HY, Mushi, able to get the Fisher off, but Black... On 20 life, you will survive through this. These are some really, really weird mistakes coming out, to be honest, in this game. Not the crispest of plays. And that I do think that was a kill for uh, for EG onto Black if they timed that right with Samael. I'm but... wondering if that's also Samael's inexperience on this hero. Oh. Where he, he just doesn't fully understand the attack time of it, wanting to get the perfect time right for it, but just a fraction of a second too early. I don't think so. I... 
sometimes you just have a brain fart. Like, <laughs> there's not much else to say about it than that. Doesn't happen that often from some mail, but... Cost him a kill. Everyone they're, makes they're smoked mistakes. up. They're gonna go for. Uh, they start with a poison. Black takes a hell of a lot of oh! damage. And in fact, the disruption, the fidget's off time from Mushi. They don't have another stun. The poison from Net will be enough to kill off Samael here. So there is a revenge, but Black severely underestimating the amount of damage that can come out from that timber. And now on bottom lane, Ohio, the crush will arrive. And he is dead. Well, should be. He is in fact dead as they go back to finish him off. It's just very strange, Toby. It's like... Not gonna argue that. Almost every single kill we see, there's some sort of misstep. But ultimately for EG, didn't matter for that bottom kill that they backed off a little bit too early. They still got the kill. Uh, the top one, however, Black, there's just... There's nothing else to say. You shouldn't die there. He... This, now it was his turn to uh, pay back some mail for the save earlier. And, and it's like it also forced, like, Mushi to play. throw out the Fissure a little bit earlier on because he thought, Oh, no, Black's in a hell of a lot of trouble. I need to throw out this fissure. I missed the stun. I missed the damage on Samael, so... You still get the kill, but you do not want to lose your offlane Slark. He needs to get that level 6. It's really big for Samael to get this kill, because he's far behind on farm against the Slark. But this, just this one kill puts him back in a really good position. Gets him level 6 now. And since Black is level 5... Okay, it's just another 100 experience. Until he can kind of ignore the harassment from Samael. Yeah. That's the bottom lane looking. Concoction. Oh. <laughs> just hear the pop. Okay. <laughs> It's just an early harassment. Windridge doesn't care too much, he's still got a bounty rune in the bottle, so there's three charges available there. And now it's easy, he tries to keep the pressure up. That's gonna finally remove that vision of EG, there was an observer wall that was planted down. And where is the Fnatic's gonna back up? They've got a smoke available on net. But all they can do is really smoke up on these two supports, and then loop around to kill off Arteezy while his chemical rage is on cooldown. But Arteezy has 10 one charges, so maybe he's not the target of choice. It's probably going to be some mail again. It's Black's forced to retreat. He is just doing stack. There's actually a big stack up there. The panel was talking about this as well. The fact that Fnatic can come up and try and counter these stacks. So the smoke's going to break. Now, Fee doesn't have vision of this. They throw down the obs. They throw down even a sentry ward right next to the obs to stop the stacks from happening. It's the bottom lane where there's more trouble. Ohio, concoction's done with the S spray down. It'll actually tick out to the Wyvern. This is very much worth it for Fnatic if they steal the stack, though. Shadow Poison is a great tool for this. He's maxing that. It's level 3. So with uh, 5 stacks on this, should almost be able to take them. That's going to give him Purge and give Ursh a we'll level 4 if they does. stick around. Like, Mushi throws at the Fidget, keeping Arteezy in fear back. And there goes the Poison. He takes the entire thing. Almost, almost level, level six. 6. Mushi is... Dead. Yeah. He buys OBS, he buys the smoke, he accepts his fate. That's now his second death as well in this Earthshaker. DJ and, uh, does have an invis rune. Yeah, is he gonna go for Arteezy here? Like, they He can't really... Like, he doesn't want... He wants to get an easier target. I was also a little bit iffy about throwing both the orbs and the Sentry Ward in the same position. Because Fear would instantly assume they left an Observe Ward behind. So you lost both your orbs and your Sentry Ward. To EG after you took out the stack. I steal from the slow. And EG are just sitting on a massive lead right now. Of course, the nature of Alchemist getting a, a good start in lane. But he's also got two kills and three assists. It's very rare for Alchemist to be that involved in kills early on. But the rotations from EG have just made it work. Arteezy is, as a result, doubling up the second and, or the highest net worth of the Radiant almost at this point. Do you think the SMY Imagine if they didn't steal a stack. Like, <laughs> Yeah. It'd be, it'd be looking wonderful if they didn't steal a stack. But at the same time, like, I'm looking at how it's easy going for this early combat build with the SMY for the Alchemist. It's going to make it very difficult for Black to have any real chance to kill him off. And in fact, is that what Black's meant to be looking for? Is Black meant to be looking for kills? Because right now, Samael's looking for him. Like, he's diving underneath that tier 1 tower, forcing Black off the lane multiple times. And this is what just shouldn't happen if uh, with Fnatic's start, but... With a couple of places that happen, some Get ready spot, for so. it, man. That fissure from Mushi. It only stuns up over on Universe, but it does split the fine out. So Fury Universe, Arteezy, and PPD split up. Yeah, that's a good fissure. And Samael TP down. He was really expecting a big fight to happen, but it just fizzles out. Ohio goes back to farming up. Black was still doing his farm up on top, and space, you could say, is being created by Fnatic. Let's see what Black goes for. That's a little bit of pressure here by Arteezy with the double damage. So he's going to force him off the lane now. Black's like, yay, Timber left. And then <laughs> this is your... 
I'd be more concerned. Trade about, off. Be more concerned about some mail coming into this mid lane. Good shackle with a with a high level up power shot. A follow up fissure from the Earthshaker. So this is only a level three Earthshaker. Like we're 11 minutes into this game. Cap flagged this. He said like like one of the biggest problems with the Earthshaker is the fact he's just like he has this inability to get to a blink dagger. If things go wrong, like. Like, he throws out a fissure, that's great, but there's no initiation, there's no ability to Radiant's use him uh, as a core anymore, it's just... I'm just wondering what this Earthshaker is really meant to achieve now. It's and he very, can't it's just very clear middle. that this, uh, this early game did not go the way Fnatic planned with their support duo. It's a very weak duo at this point with uh, without levels. Unfortunately uh, for them, Net is level 7, so he's actually doing very well in the Shadow Demon with getting farmed still the stack, now farmed some in the lane, now going jungle. Oh, the smoke. He's trying to keep EG's up. gonna yeah. break Fnatic smoke as well as Fnatic breaking EG's concoction from Arteezy. It's gonna be Mushi who again takes a stumble with a Fiend's Grip up. The Fidge will come out, which will stop Fear from channeling, but with a Blink Crush forward, Universe is on the field with that Blink Dagger Slaughter. DJ trying to keep Samal out with a Timber Chain. He gets the kill over on Mushi. Now goes over towards DJ. The chain's back off cooldown again, but there's no trees for him to work on, and Artie's gonna sun himself up. Luckily, no denial and base this time around, but it is 9 to 1 in favor of EG. Never forget. They're gonna need Black to come up big. But how? Yep, I, I don't know if there's a better build here than just a standard Shadow Blade and trying to fight, because they're not gonna win the farming game. They're very behind with two defensive supports against a lineup that has an alchemist farming like crazy, a Timbersaw who fully came back into the game, and of course the Slaughter of Universe who I think is second on last hits right now. Actually he is third slightly behind Black, but in terms of net worth still looking better. Yep. Arteezy now getting a massive Ancient stack too. Still only one point greed, but should be getting more than enough out of this. The Vice only got one point in greed and he's still like a full 3,000 net worth in front of the top fanatic like net worth, it's it just flags the the problem even more. What do we got from net? Looks like net's either yeah, this is either a four star or or if he's thinking about like double slows, which should be run of Atos. But they need some kind of positional advantage up against EG at the moment, and they just don't have it. Is under attack. Looks like now they want to try to find a kill on some male. This support, this duo of heroes won't do it. <laughs> Shaker level 3 is a fissure. And Black doesn't have enough damage to output against Samel yet. And this is really interesting because at this point in time, Timber is usually pretty fragile with his item build. See, oh, they're, they're going to try it. Can. It's not enough. Yep. They can't leash him. He has 800 health, but they can't kill him with this duo of, of heroes. So it's Samel just continues farming. It's kind of funny too because Black tries to steal Ooh. his essence, that hook shot off target from Ohio. He had the Observer Ward down, so he knew exactly where Samael was, but expected Samael to walk up and try to predict it a little bit too much. There's just nothing working out for Fnatic right now. Yeah. It seems like they're starting to get a little bit desperate with their moves and just looking for anything they can find. They I'm surprised it. they don't involve Net more. Hey, remember the strat from Game 2. If you're losing, kill off PPD. Yep. Not even that is working this game. Nope. Radiant structures are Worked multiple times in the last. Radiant they still lost that game, though. Yeah, they did. So... <laughs> The strat was also not successful. <laughs> I'm not saying it was a winning strat, I'm just saying it was the it was their focus. But this one it was just PPD walking up to them. Can get rid of this observer wall. The sentry wood he planted on inside the dire jungle is is still visible of that. Like still does see the observer ward of Fnatic. It's a tower trade-off for the moment. Tier one on top for the tier one tower on bottom. So good money coming in for Fnatic. And Black almost has Shadow Blade now. It's decent timing. Tread's Shadow Blade minute 15 is, is pretty good with Fierce a Quilla even. Kill. Look at Fierce position, just in the tree line. He's waiting for someone from Fnatic to move over. Starts with the Fiend's Grip. Follow up Nightmare if he needs to. There is the backup of Net, but he's running down. He wants that easy. That's the reason the support came in from Ohio as well. Hook shots oh, available, so and now out. they start. They actually purge onto Arteezy. And do they have enough? The disruption timing is going to come up, and actually perfect. Arteezy stuns himself up. Shackles perfect. At the same time, in middle lane, it was a commitment from EG to kill off the Earthshaker, but you're trading a level four Mushi for a level eleven Arteezy. And he has really high net worth, so he's a very valuable kill for them. The timing on that disruption was actually oh, crazy. RTJ, oh, they're going again. Fear, he's got Fiend's Grip available, and there's nothing that can do to save him. Disruption, actually, the last minute does connect in and Fear. Well, what's he got is another nightmare available. Mushi will now arrive at Universe. He's going to crush oh. it down. Mushi oh. just never threw the Fissure. 
Mushi is really looking like. So, a lot of the times you can actually see a Shaker's level of confidence in the game with... Oh, wait a second. PPD. Lots of trouble. We'll get out. He's got Arctic Oh, maybe not! Oh, damn it! Oh! Three health. So close. What the hell? But yeah, if you, could, you could tell from Mushi, like, he keeps canceling his fissures. It's like he doesn't have confidence in his original placements or that he misreads situations con uh, consistently. He has to pick it up again. That was a possible kill on the slaughterer if he gets the fisher off at the right time. Or higher. They can't kill Artizi, I think. No, they oh, they're can't. They're going to try. Well, they're going to cock him up at the battery stop, but Artizi got his stun available. Mushi, fissure available. Net's going to come in. They go for the purge as well as the catch up with the poison. Artizi, they're still trying to work through this chemical These race. But Artizi, disruption. The fidget's on the wrong side. They're keeping the poison up. Now Samal's going to come and join the fight with a huge crush from Universe. Three heroes locked with a whirling death. Fanatic, they are falling apart. The seams. Game one, we thought there was a hope. But right now, the hope has been lost if you're a Fnatic fan. You've still got Arteezy with 100 life hanging around. Black's gonna drop as well. He tried to come in the fight. The amplification, they'll shrug it off, but Universe with just one last attack. Fnatic will lose four. Positioning from Universe, perfect for the three-man crush. Fnatic couldn't kill off Arteezy fast enough. I think they could have with a better fissure than that one. It locked him on the wrong side. I, there were plenty of opportunities. I think, didn't they... They had a demonic purge running. An entire demonic purge expired, yep. and they still got a bad fissure out of it. That's just... It's just a shame to see, because it's it's very clear that Mushi is obviously very unsatisfied with his performance here. He's just... He's missing a lot of spells that shouldn't happen. And then, of course, with all the time it took, EG get a fantastic setup. They don't miss. That's up their combos. Triple crush, triple concoction, Samael landing everything on three heroes, and they just wipe the floor with uh, Fnatic. And now it's up to the point where DJ's going into Shadowblade to get, what, an initiation position for the Windranger? No Blink Dagger, no Force Staff to do it, and no Aghanim Scepter early on either. So this Wind Ranger is kind of being nerfed as their damage source, and Slark also with a Shadow Blade up. It's only a matter of time before they just use this excess money of EG, pick up a gem, so the Shadow Blades won't even help them. Like, you've got a Bloodstone freshly on this Timbersaw with an Aegis the Immortal. It's a 5 for 1 Timbersaw for some mail. I think they should actually give him the gem. Yep. Right now. I like that idea a lot of just buying a gem and taking full map control. They have to be feeling like they're far ahead. They know there's a Shadow Blade on Slark, so... It instantly negates the big item purchases as well from the two cores of Fnatic that have money. Absolutely. Also removes all vision for Fnatic. This is observe what they've got. It's never got dewatered. <laughs> it's it's actually managed to go through the full duration over in the Dire Jungle, even though there was a Dire Sentry Ward looking at it for such a long time. Either way, like, EG is still 15 up in the kill count against the two of Fnatic. Like, it's it's a big dream right now. 7.5k in and experience. Nice from yeah. Universe and Grim. And Ohio is dead. No way to get out of this one. It's a double attack as well. PPD's cold and bracing himself up. He should end up dying here, but okay. No, one charges the curse, buying some space, blank jumping forward, and Wind Ranger will be able to find this kill. So they do at least get a bit of a trade off here, Fnatic. AG are knocking on the front door, though. They're not getting in this time around, that's for sure, but Samael is not really scared of anything. They don't need to. This is exactly what Black wanted to do before. Ah, uh, goodbye, DJ. Um, like, it's just the attack into the tier 3 tower that forces the retreat. Forces the attention to be dragged away from from other locations, so EG can keep attacking, keep fighting. You got Nagus the Immortal, and you know you know you're not going to bush up to high ground, so you just try and find the other advantages. They still need to take out the other tier one and tier two towers on the on the field. But for a lineup that doesn't really have great pushing power, and you've already taken out the entire bottom lane of towers, another positive for EG. Yeah. And a radiance is almost done for Arteezy. He's 400 gold away from completing it. I mean, level 3 Greaves now, Greaves up, it's, yeah. Greaves Greaves isn't gonna go, gonna, gonna work. Good news for Fnatic is that Mushi's actually getting gold. Uh, they need to make sure he also gets experience, because I, when I'm looking at potential avenues of comeback for Fnatic in this, the number one on my list is a Blink Dagger on Shaker. I think that's the one thing that can catch EG off guard and give them a team fight win. Until then, it's almost impossible to see a way for Fnatic to do it. Slark simply isn't farmed enough. The Alchemist now with the Radiance gives him a lot of actually health against the Slark because of the miss chance. And against the Windranger too. And he will just be farming like Oh hi, said. Easy amplification after the Blink Crush. They just walked in, so they take out the Clockwork, and that means the Tier 1 tower belongs to EG. 
They cannot defend it. There's 57 life on it, so yeah, they're definitely not going to defend that. In fact, EG can just push for more. 22 seconds without a clockwork, without the initiation from Fnatic. And Fnatic just want to keep avoiding the fights. There's no reason for them to try and defend against EG. And that's that's one thing about EG's lineup we haven't talked about so much. They're actually pretty bad at breaking high ground. Alchemist is not that good until he starts getting some significant damage items. Oh, actually gonna get engaged on here. Yeah, it's easy. Gonna actually throw out the stun. Clockwork, nice hook shot forward. The purge allows him to get the perfect timing for a Pafia. Oh, the four star story there for the slaughter. Pushing out TZ back. The poison was on him. And okay, Black arrives at the perfect time. That's a huge kill for him. Oh, and gets the leash over towards Fear. The Echo Slam from Mushi. He'll control up the Bane, the Nightmare. He won't be able to get the denial off. In fact, the Clockwork will be able to take this kill. A mega kill streak. In fact, 532 gold coming in for the Clockwork. It's actually his build going in for what appears to be an Orca, but the Blink Crush out from Universe, even gets the first hit, Bash on Black. Black needs to get the Shadow Dance off, but he's able to do so. Passes oh. away for some hail with a Blink forward, and the Shark being dragged back in. He finds the damage to kill off Black, now goes for Ohio. The disruption came in from Net, but it kept Universe out of the play. Not to mail. And they'll still end up losing Ohio, so very quick tip for tat. And that's 10 Bloodstone charges now on Samael. It's very understandable that Fnatic tried to push for that tower. They were 5 on 3, they knew the tower was low. Oh, but... nice shackle. Samael, well, this armor's gonna start kicking up a little bit faster, and, well, he's got chained with the power shot from DJ. He actually gets the kill. Millisecond expiration on Ro Aegis. Did you see that? No. <laughs> was it really that? It really it expired was that while It expired while the power shot was mid-air. We're talking tenths of a second that... I don't even know if they were planning that. If they were, that was ridiculous from I, Fnatic. I doubt they did. <gasps> I doubt they did. I was did. looking at his inventory and was like, oh, he's got Aegis. Well, they get the Aegis at least, and then... Wow, that was actually insane. It's, a, it's at this point I'm hoping our secondary orbs just clicked it in we can see a, like, a, like a massively slow-mo replay of that one. That... Oh, Samael's gonna feel so robbed. He loses. Yeah, I really... Bloodstone charges as well because of this. I really wanted to slow-mo of that to see... I'm almost positive it was while the f the power shot was midair that the Aegis expired. Like that's the closest cut I've ever seen on that. I think. Oh, sick stuff. A little bit of luck, uh, a little bit of luck rather, going Fnatic's way. And uh, we'll see if they can make anything with it. They got a blink dagger on Mushi because of it. Like he's had a very very rough game, but just these last few minutes, he's landed a couple of fissures to get three assists and got some farm to go with it. Slaughter going in. Yep, hook shot as well as that from Ohio. And can they keep their control up? Samael, he's in the fight. Nick gets taken down so quickly that he at least just drops up on Bane, so there's no brain stamp to get the quick pick. And Mushi's just going to TP himself out of here. They don't have Echo Slam. Ohio is. Hi oh, wait, no. He's hiding at the trees. Samael, he realized something is awry. Cuts through the tree line. And they also lose Wind Ranger at the same time. Alchemist getting a solo kill in the mid on DJ. DJ did get the tower though, so speaking of midair, he must have had a shot midair, destroying the tower right after he died. Uh, another this is pick off for EG now. Mushi, he can't blink. He's gonna go for the fissure stun. He needs more time, and he just won't get it. Even Universe finding himself a greater bash, and Black is being hunted down. There's a puff of smoke which they're trying to follow. Fear. Uh, okay, he can only reach with the enfeeble. He can't reach with anything else. But EG now move into, again, objective-based gaming. Tier 1 towers, look for the Tier 2s directly after. And this epically farmed up Alchemist. Almost 16,000 net worth 25 minutes into the game. An overall advantage of 12k in the in the uh, gold and almost 10k in the experience. It looks like Arteezy is going to transition this only Sanj. Uh, or r rather, he disassembled his Sanj and Yasha for the Manta. He's going to uh, transition that gonna into... going to go on Universe right now with a Blink Shackle. Is that going to be enough? Oh, sorry, Shadow Blade Shackle in. But no, PPD's there. Goes on the curse on DJ. A hook shot forward from Ohio. Trying to keep fear out this but He can't go for the brain step. Goes the Nightmare. But Mushi jumps in for the Echo. He's going to kill off Universe. Can't buy enough space for his core to get back out again. Not easy. Sticky back coming into the fight. Ohio stunned up and brought down. Arteezy just using the Fist of Fury to win this one at the oh, Mushi tries to slow down some mail but he's got nowhere really to survive this net with the purchase at least keeping fear control but PPD cold embracing him up keeping his teammates alive and black the sole survivor who's still just farming up the mid lane the only thing of value that was lost there from EG was universe 
man, Fear has been so good in this game on that Bane. His rotations, his decision making, and the Glimmer K plays he's already made now. He's always in the right place at the right time, putting so much pressure on Fnatic that I think they're going to have to start focusing on this Bane more early on in the fights. They did catch him with the clockwork, but couldn't bring him down in time, and Fear just ends up getting... He's 7-1-9 right now, and... At the same time, you've, you're looking at the other support of EG. PPD is 1-1-11. One, one, and 11. one death each support, plenty of assists, and they're reading the game very well. 20,000 lead. This is exactly what EG needed to. The confidence to come through. It's a bit of a merciless like, format for the group stage. They needed to find themselves a win. So without it, it's almost a guaranteed lower bracket. Almost. But this is the, this is the dream for them. Twenty eight to seven, huge advantage across the board. The Slark not finding any real momentum. The BKB is there for Black, but we'll see how much that ten second duration will be able to achieve. Meanwhile, Artizi getting bigger and bigger now with an Octarine call behind him. With the Radiance burning, Artizi is almost an immortal. There's no damage from the Wind Ranger. She's eight hundred gold away from her own Aghanim scepter. And until she's got that up, there there isn't really enough damage coming out from this Wind Ranger. That you're gonna find a kill, and maybe even with the Octarine, she needs to have a damage dealing item on top of that Aghanim Scepter. We're definitely starting to reach the point where uh, EG can think about high ground, simply because of how strong Artizi is. If they had a medallion, or even better, a crest on one of their supports that they could just put on Artizi, I think it would, just with an Aegis, they could probably take Lena Barracks. So I'm curious to see if PPD goes in that direction with his Wyvern. Could buy a medallion right now if he wanted to, but might be looking for a secondary force that. Oh, Universe! Off. Black. I don't know exactly what he was doing, hiding in the tree line. Now he'll trigger the Shadow Blade and TP oh. up with the Dash from Universe! There was no Slytherin Crush! Fear! Well, okay, they wait this out, and Black, brain set down. Timing just not working for him. He actually had the ability to pounce and TP himself away to safety, but decided against it. That was just a panic TP, more than anything. Or actually, I don't know if he... If he pounces, you can still follow with Force Staff, but then there's at least the risk that Universe misplays it slightly. He could have run with a Shadow Blade. Like, he wasn't amplified. So he could have just kept running. PPD? Okay, he's got the help. Artizi arrives to start at the right time, and he just punches Wind Ranger down. So the two cores on the sideline. The Aghanim Scepter now delayed even further. If Wind Ranger finished up that tower, he had the full Ags. Because of that death, now he's 700 gold behind. Finishing that Ags. And Tamail is looking really, really big in this game now. 10, 2, and 3, he just got a Hex. What she wanted in game one, arrive in game three. Yep. And another Roshan for EG. On the back of this, Universe will be looking at his at his uh, full BKB. PPD is almost at a point of having a Blink Dagger available. He has already got Blink Dagger plus his, his Glimmer Cape. And Samel is going to take the Aegis Immortal once again. This is... Yeah. I'm trying to find hope for Fnatic. Like, the Wombo combo, that combo you're talking about, like, Mushi jump in for the big Echo Slam. It can be there. However, on bottom lane, Black, the Nightmare, that, like, he's going to four staff him down, which means the TP in from Artizi with the VTs is a little bit too far away. Defensive disruption as well from Black and Smell jumps forward. He won't find the target. He was looking for the Hex, but Dark Pack was already running. Nice play from Net there with his disruption to buy Black time to get Dark Packed off. Actually switching the gem around, because Black's walking around with Net's gem at the moment. So they're wanting to make sure they can kill off Fear, no Glimmer Cape protection. Fear's actually in a position where you could four staff him up if, if you get the vision on him. Or if you had a four staff. <laughs> you do, it's on the SD, but he's dead already. The blink forward is the perfect timing. The fidget block will lock some mail as well as Universe in, but Universe with his four staff gets back out again. The concoction popping from Artizi, he's about to sun himself up. Can actually dodge that one with the mana sample, but instead he decides to tank it himself. And the Echo Slam, Mushi, no! As he spray. didn't get out! The Essence Spray stops it! And Ohio, he's trapped outside! It's a double kill already for Samal! The Shackles might hold Universe and Samal close together, but the Bonds, they'll break! And EG go in deep under the Tier 4 towers, and this could almost be the game right now. In fact, it is! DJ's gonna call it GG! EG have stomped Game 3 out! The lanes don't work, Fnatic, some coordination things to worry about as well, and this is not the time you want to have these issues. That has got to be demoralizing. The way they won game one, and actually, 
I don't know. Th this this game for me was just as sad as it is. Just lots of misplays from Fnatic. It wasn't a strategic loss. I think the way they put their lanes was okay. Yep. I think some of the ideas they had were fine, but they missed spells, mistimed them, whiffed them entirely.